Hi guys, Monica here. So I'm going to do another cooking video for you guys. Tonight I'm going to show you how I make my KFC bowls. If you're not familiar with what KFC bowls are, they are just the little bowls that you get uh, with mashed potatoes, gravy, corn, chicken, and some cheese. I switch mine up as I do all of my recipes. I have more than one way to make, I think, all of my recipes. So I'm going to show you guys. If you would like to see them, then keep watching. Okay, for this recipe, you are going to need chicken. I'm using a little over a pound of boneless, skinless chicken. Um, I am using a jar of Heinz uh, gravy in classic chicken. Feel free to make your own or use brown gravy. I'm just being a little, uh, little lazy tonight, but it works just as fine and tastes just as great. I am also using a can of corn. Um, if you want to use real corn, feel free to do that as well. I'm going to use some potatoes. And then how I switch mine up a little bit, I make macaroni and cheese. So I'm using some elbow noodles and then of course some cheese. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and start out with cutting our potatoes. I just uh, skin the potato, I just take the whole thing, cut it in half, take my knife and just cut it in chunks, about the same size. You want them to cook, yeah, that goes everywhere. <laughs> you want it to cook um, all at the same time and evenly, so I just do that. And they don't have to be perfect because we are going to mash them down, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I just take them and, like I said, cut it in half, and then just cut them in about the same size chunks. I do this because it takes, well, I start with the potatoes, generally because it takes longer to cook the potatoes than, like, the whole meal together. So I have cut up all my potatoes, and I'm just using the amount uh, for my family, which I'm gonna feed uh, six of us. So I generally use eight to 10 potatoes, but if you're making this for a much smaller crowd, then um, use as many as it takes to feed uh, your family. So I've got them all nice and cut up and sitting in a water bath, so to speak. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little salt and pepper um, in the pot and stick it on the stove to get that boiling. And also I'm going to go ahead and measure out the proper amount of macaroni noodles that I'm going to use, which I don't use a lot because this is kind of just a, kind of like a topping, so to speak, in this meal. So I'm going to go ahead and get the water for this going as well. All right, now that I have uh, the water for our macaroni noodles and our potatoes on the go, here comes the fun part. Now you can either leave your chicken um, like this and just cook it, you know, with no skin or anything. I like the fried chicken coat. But if you're going for a little bit leaner, leave this stuff out. But this is my most favorite part. Okay, so I have a Ziploc bag and I have some all-purpose flour. All I'm going to do is just take a little measuring cup and put enough in my bag just to coat the chicken. I normally do this with a brown paper bag, but um, I'm kind of out of them right now just because not many stores uh, use them anymore, which I love them. They're great for um, coating your chicken or um, starting a bonfire or even your grill and storing sometimes vegetables and stuff like that and especially if you're going to make banana pudding and you need your uh, bananas to ripen up. So anyways, I put the flour in there. I'm going to take some of my Queen Bee Cajun seasoning. You can find this at Walmart. I give that a nice coat in there. I'm going to take some salt. I give that a little shake around in there a few times. But not too much because this does have salt and pepper in it so I kind of go sparingly on it and then I have some onion powder give that a little bit in the bag and then I have some garlic powder I'm not putting pepper in this because like I said the Cajun um, seasoning already has it in there so I'm just gonna kind of skip that step move that out of the way all right so well that's what it looks like now we're going to go ahead and take our chicken and drop it in there you can do one at a time, or you can do them um, like I am, just throwing it all in there and get it over and done. So, very carefully, zip your bag. I don't like normally touching it, but because I am going to wash my hands, and I'll need that hand to put it in the fryer, I'll just go ahead and do it. So, I like to, in case you cannot hear me, I like to kind of just throw it around like so, shake it. This is, if you bake fried chicken and you cannot get the flour to stick to your chicken, this is the best way to do it. I love to do it this way. And of course, it has been around for decades. I've done my fried chicken like this for 13 years. 
and I learned from my mom, which learned from her mom, which probably learned from her mom, so it just kind of goes back and back and back. So, anyways, I do it like this. I also do my pork chops this way when I'm making fried pork chops. Okay, now that that's good, I'm gonna throw this away, wash my hands, and get our oil ready for our chicken. So I just have my cast iron skillet with enough oil just for these couple of pieces of chicken. If you're making more, of course, add more, etc. So um, I'm going to check our oil to see if it is ready. I just grab a pinch of flour, drop it in. Hear the sizzle, it's ready. So we're gonna go ahead and take our chicken out of our bag, just like this. And lay it in there and then we should have enough room just for this last little piece of chicken in our skillet there we go and then of course you just throw the flour away easy cleanup so um, as you see it is already starting to bubble and cook like that I like to take a little bit of my queen bee seasoning and of course sprinkle a little bit more on if you have watched my uh, fried chicken video then you'll see that I do that um, as well and then when I flip it over I repeat the step so I'm gonna go ahead and let these cook another tip just real quick don't put too many pieces of chicken in your skillet you don't want to overcrowd it and cool the uh, oil too quickly because then things don't cook right so I'm gonna go ahead and finish cooking this chicken because I already have another video on how to uh, fry chicken so I'm gonna finish cooking the chicken and then I will be back to show you guys what I do next Okay, so as you can probably see, with all the steam, our potatoes are done and our chicken is done. I just set them on a cooling rack to just kind of sit and hang out for a little bit. That way when I'm cutting it up, it's not too hot and burning my hands. So I'm going to go ahead and mash the potatoes up. Now I've done a video on this as well, uh, how I make my mashed potatoes, but I'll kind of give you a quick rundown. I add a heaping spoonful of butter. Yeah, not very uh, skimpy around here. I add a splash of milk. And then I'm going to go ahead and get to mashing them. So I have a potato masher. If you do not have one, you can find one at the store. Pretty cheap. Um, they also have those little like hand mixer things that you can use. Or if you have a little um, hand mixer, you can use one of those. So I'm going to mash these all up. Just like so. Like I said, I have a video on these. Um, and I put my most favorite mayonnaise in there which is the Duke's mayonnaise. I really love it mayonnaise. I don't know what it is, it just tastes so much better than the other ones that you get. And I can always tell the difference. If I go to the store and they're out of Duke and I uh, have to get another one, I can always tell the difference. It's just, I don't know, something about this mayonnaise. So, I don't know. As always, if you hear a little noise, I got four kids. Sorry, if you're looking for, for a really, really professional video, don't look here. I'm about as real as it gets here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take a spoon and take some mayonnaise. So I take a couple of spoonfuls of mayonnaise and then I mix it around and I kind of look at it. And if you need to add a little more milk, go ahead and add a little more milk. Let's go ahead and mix it all up, just like that. You want really nice, smooth, whipped potatoes. I always leave a few chunks uh, in my potatoes just because I like chunky potatoes and so does my husband. So the chunks don't bother me, but if you want really, really smooth ones, then uh, just smash them or mix a little bit um, longer. So this looks pretty good. I'm not going to salt the potatoes because I already did while uh, they were cooking. And then, of course, I have put some salt uh, on the chicken and I just don't want this meal to be really really salty so right now all I'm waiting on is for my water for the macaroni and cheese to boil and I have my corn in a pot uh, boiling away over there so I'm gonna wait for that to happen and then I'll be back to show you what to do next okay so while I'm waiting on the macaroni noodles to uh, finish cooking over there I'm cutting up my chicken so so I just put it on the cutting board and you see I've already done this I just cut it into slices you can do that uh, as well um, I like to cut them into slices and then cut the slices in half just to uh, further the chicken just because I have uh, boys that really, really love their meat and they will eat more of the meat than they do anything else. So I just want to make sure that it goes uh, further. Also, I forgot to mention, if you want to buy chicken, 
uh, from the store, like the uh, chicken tenders, the breaded ones, um, or even popcorn chicken, you can use that as well, and it turns out just as great. So, just in case you don't want to cook your chicken, or if you're just in a hurry um, on a school night, and so you got to get the kids to practice, um, or church, like sometimes I have to, um, this is uh, really simple for that too. So, just cutting these in half. I'm almost done here, and hopefully the noodles will be done. And I'm going to make a real quick um, cheese sauce for my uh, noodles. The chicken's flying everywhere. Um, if you guys are interested in a video on how I make my homemade macaroni and cheese, leave me a comment below, and I will do one of those for you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go check my noodles, and then I will be back to update you. Okay, so everything is done. Now it's time to assemble the bowls. So I have already put in some mashed potatoes and I hear a little hungry guest coming in here. So hopefully his brother will get him out real quick. Okay, so I have already put the mashed potatoes in the bottom of the bowl, just um, a spoonful, and I've kind of flattened it down a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and add some of the corn, just kind of around in there. Depends on how well you really like corn. Put some of those in there. And now we're going to add a spoonful of the homemade mac and cheese. Bring it very lightly, or as much as you want, kind of depends. I know, I'm going. He's a hungry little guest. Yeah, he's hungry, he's very hungry. Okay, so I'm just putting some of that in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and take some of our chicken lay that around in there you can feel free to add as much as you like as little as you like i'm going to put a few pieces just like so and if i must toot my own horn i will tell you that my chicken is really good i love it all right now we're going to take some of that gravy and just kind of cover everything just like so add as much or as little as you like like i said you can add brown gravy <laughs> he's back you can add brown gravy if you like, but this is the way that I like mine. If you want to top it with a little more extra cheese, go right ahead, but this is the way that I'm going to eat mine. Okay, so that is so. it for the KFC bowls. It's always real simple, but really good. So, uh, yeah, I would like to uh, thank all of my new subscribers as well. Thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and a comment, and if you have not subscribed, then please do. I'm still trying to reach my goal of at least 500 by my birthday, which is May 19th. Um, if you guys have any um, dishes that you would like me to make or recreate, um, leave me a comment below. I love reading you guys' comments, which I read them, and I check them every day. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to go ahead and turn out some more uh, videos regularly, kind of get back into my groove because I haven't been on it. So, uh, yeah, so I will see you guys in the next video.